It's currently in the country for the Open Book Fair happening in Cape Town, as well as the South African Book Fair that is currently taking place here in Johannesburg. Her book, Independence, was first published a decade ago, and it tells the beautiful, compelling and intriguing love story of Nigerian-born Tayo Ajayi, who meets Vanessa Richardson, a beautiful daughter of an ex-colonial officer. It's set in the early 1960s, and the book explores the complexities of Africa today its diaspora and its relationship with the rest of the world. Well, Sarah is here. I'm excited to chat to her all about this. Firstly, Sarah, congratulations on your book being republished. Welcome to Morning Live. Thank you so much. It's great to be here. I want to go back to when this book was nothing but an idea all those many years ago and to see the success that it's reached today. What are your reflections on how far you've come? Well, it's, it's very exciting. I think when the book was in its idea stage, I was really longing to read a book that was a great love story set at least partly in Africa with the main character who was from um, Nigeria. And I wasn't finding that story. And so that's what drove me to write the story. And I wanted to set it in the 1960s because that was such an exciting decade across the world. There were independence movements within West Africa. This is when Nigeria became independent. And, you know, it was an era of civil rights, um, feminist movements. In many ways, actually, those same themes, you know, feminist movements, civil rights, and so forth, are still issues that we're talking about now and that we're grappling with now still. Mm. And so I was excited to set it at that time. And it was a story that I wanted to read and I wasn't finding. So Toni Morrison says, if that's the case, then you try and write it. So I had no, I was writing it for me. I had no expectations that it would be read by quite a few people. So. Just take us through the relationship that then happens between these two main protagonists in your book and, and, and how it unfolds or without giving too much away. So it's a love story and most love stories are fraught in some sense, in some way or other, but it's particularly fraught given the particular context in which the story unfolds. So there is opposition to uh, black man and a white woman being together, as there still is. Um, and so, it, you know, at the heart of the story is this love story between two individuals. But I also feel that the, it's, a, it's a love story, in a sense, to Nigeria. So Nigeria is where I'm from, it's where I grew up. And I wanted to write historical fiction. I wanted to capture that moment, which in the 1960s was a really exciting time. You know, when you go back and you look at newspapers from that era, the people are saying, you know, Nigeria will lead the world. And, you know, the Nigerian currency was really strong and so forth. And, you know, in a few decades, that's not what's happened, at least politically and economically, although there's still a lot, a lot to celebrate that's coming out of Nigeria. So take us through the other themes that you do explore within this love story. You, you talk about uh, independence, you talk about Nigeria and, you know, where it's come from politically, economically. Uh, what are the other themes that you'd like a reader to sit and think about or, um, you know, reflect on while reading this love story? I think it's interesting when a writer is asked that question because I think, for me, I would love the reader to really fall in love with the characters and to feel compelled by the story. Um, and so, you know, the characters have their own interests. Vanessa is a journalist and Vanessa is very interested in what's happening in the world. Um, she's something of an activist. Uh, they are the, both characters when the story starts are young. It's a coming of age story. So there's a lot from you know, how we grow up and, and coming of age to what a love story is like, what holds people together, what pulls people apart. Um, it's up to the reader to choose what they find to <laughs> yes. be most compelling. I mean, you have sold over three million copies internationally. Um, I, I don't know if I should say is that a great way to be affirmed, or but what are your reflections on, on and just how well this book has done? I'm pretty sure it exceeded your expectations. It did. Um, and it's, it's been really exciting for me as a writer to have a lot of people read it, but particularly young people. And so the, the book has been on syllabi uh, across uh, the continent in Zimbabwe, in Nigeria. And so sometimes some of the most exciting messages that I'll get from people are people saying, you know, I really liked your book, but 
I want to write a better book, you know? <laughs> and so that, that for me is really exciting. I think I'm really excited to be in South Africa at the moment and to be a part of these book festivals because it's a way of introducing us all to new voices. And, um, you know, we need so many new names to riff on No Violet Bulawayo's title. We need a lot more writers. There's so many stories to tell. And so it's exciting for me if my book my stories in some small way inspire others. And let's talk about uh, your visits, your current visits to South Africa. You're here, you're part of uh, the book fair that's currently um, happening. Just speak to us about your role and your contribution. Well, I've been uh, contributing to panels, speaking, and I've been attending panels, listening to other writers. And it's exciting for me to see, to be form more familiar with new writers. There are uh, writers like Fred Kumalo that I've read and known of before, and that's exciting. And I think, you know, it's not just that I'm, it's not only because I'm in South Africa that I'm saying this, but South African literature and the arts have always been a great inspiration for me. So, you know, I grew up reading uh, Lewis and Kosi, um, Nadine Gordema, Fred Kumalo, and, you know, other writers. Um, but not just writers have been inspirational for me, but music. Mm -hmm. So, in fact, when I was writing Independence, Hugh Masakela was a big influence. Uh, I was listening to his album Hope. Um, there's a song in that album, Marketplace, which is something of a love story. So that story was playing in my head as I was writing. Um, and, you know, South African filmmakers. Yeah. Uh, there's Oliswa Sitole, is a uh, documentary filmmaker here, I think, in jo Johannesburg. And her work, um, focusing on women and young girls, has been a great inspiration to me. So, yeah, you, as you can tell, I'm, I'm really <laughs> excited to be here because, first of all, I'm learning about new, new names, new voices, um, but it's also a a land that has nurtured me as an artist. Oh, thank you so much. Unfortunately, we are out of time. That is where we will leave it. Thank you so much for thank your you. great contribution. And once again, uh, congratulations on your great success. Thank Thanks you, so Sarah. Thank you. That was our guest author, Sarah Ladipo Mainike. And she's been speaking to us about her book, uh, Independence, that has recently been republished for its 10th anniversary. If you belong to a book club or if you're a lone reader, you can also join us on our Sunday morning book feature to talk about some of the books that you're currently reading or have read uh, send us a detailed description of the book and uh, you can also send us a picture with uh, a caption on social media and just letting us know um, all about the book that you're reading at morning lab sabc is where you can find us on twitter morning lab sabc is our facebook page and of course are you more than welcome to drop us an email at morning at sabc.co.za we take a quick break do stay with us